Have faith. Let it begin. Hello, everyone. My name is Angel, and welcome to another episode of Have Faith, Let It Begin. I want to start off by thanking Gabby Santana again for our use of our theme song. She wrote it. She produced it. She performed it. Gabby Santana wrote Tested, and that is our theme song here at Have Faith, Let It Begin. Uh, Back in our live show, we aired her uh, song Ice Cream. Uh, original song written and performed and pr- you know produced by her. Uh, we ask you to look at her uh, YouTube channel, Gabby Santana. There are many more songs, and there are going to be many more songs that we will air here on our show. So again, thank you, Gabby, and uh, good, luck, good luck on your school year this year. Well, folks, we came off of a crazy um, two-part series on uh, being cheated on. And it's, it's hard to come off of those two episodes and then try to uh, move on to something else. So, so I, I thought that just to shed some new light and give you new updates, I thought it'd be r- the right thing to do to give you some great motivational story today um, and some updates regarding myself and my family. First and, first and foremost, my father's doing better each and every day. His test results are continuing to come back in our, in our favor. So praise to God and praise to all of you that prayed and shared comments to me on our Facebook page and our like page and those that have emailed us at our show. We thank you for your uh, concern and uh, we will continue to update you in the weeks to come. Second, I am exhausted. <laughs> Um, as uh, if you're new to the show, um, I'm going to be a dad for the first time, and uh, you know we are closing in on nine weeks to go. Th- this uh, actually nine weeks to go yesterday, uh, which was Tuesday, and uh, it has it has been an incredible journey. Now, please, by all means, I'm not taking anything away from my wife. Boy, she has gone through those ups and downs in her pregnancy. Thank God, not too much morning sickness at all. But, uh, you know, I don't want it to make it seem like it's all about me because God knows it's really all about her and my daughter. Uh, But, and yes, by the way, it is a girl for those of you that didn't know that. Um, I just want to talk to you about the guy's uh, slash father's point of view. Wow. Um, It's been a mental uh, change uh, for me. Um, For those of you that are are already fathers, already probably giggling and saying, yeah, I remember those days. Um, you know, we have the, the second we found out we were pregnant, we knew we had to make changes to our home. We have a very small home. It's a starter home. It's like 900 square foot. I mean, I think I've said this joke before, but I mean, if I ordered a large pizza, we'd have to eat it outside. That's how small our house is. Um, and you know, we never planned to have a child. Um, I always wanted one. My wife didn't. Um, there's other episodes in the past that you know, talk about that, um, and the journey that we, uh, you know, we were, what we were on. And then all of a sudden, you know, God presented us with this miracle and, uh, we're, we're blessed, uh, 11 years, you know, in the making we've been together and it's just, uh, it, I am completely happy. Um, I've always been happy in my marriage. I've always been happy with my home, my jobs, my job, I should say. And I'm extremely happy about this. Uh, podcast, the show, but to know that we're bringing a life into this world and to know that I'm finally going to have fulfill this one last uh, thing that I never thought I would be, and when that is to be a dad. So I have been building <laughs> these last uh, 72 hours, I have been building uh, cribs, uh, I should say cribs, crib um, thanks to help my father. Uh, I'm actually making a video right now. I videotaped my father and I uh, making the crib. So uh, I'm going to give you the short version of it. And uh, I'll, I'm going to air it on our like uh, page on Facebook. Um, then I had to build a changing station. Um, it's it's hysterical. I'm going to probably do a voiceover um, so you understand the inside jokes that have gone on in this. Um, we have <sighs> had an electrician come over. We put light fixtures, a new fan. I mean, we've done everything. I just had the cable guy, had to move the modem and everything over because, you know, that was our former office. Now it's the nursery. 
Um, it, it's just been one thing after the other. And, and, and thank God, you know, by the grace of God that we haven't had any problems. We also, this was the year that we had already planned as we get a little louder here in the background because I'm now hitting the highway. Um, we planned on doing, you know, uh, doing uh, things to the, to the house. So we had already planned to do the rest of the windows and then the roof. So all that, you know, and now the you're getting into the fall. So I already ordered the oil. So they're coming and, and we're going to we're going to um, uh, do the maintenance on the boiler. I mean, it's just it's crazy, you know, um, but in a good way, in a good way. So what is the purpose of this episode? Um, which I think I'm going to actually uh, label this episode uh, update. If I, You probably already know that by now. Update or uh, soon to be a father. I, I haven't decided yet. When we closed out the breakups episodes, we talked about having a lot of patience in prayer. Having the opportunity to believe that all things do come um, in time. When, and, uh, and I believe that when you are a believer of God, um, He provides. He always provides. It doesn't happen fast. It doesn't always happen, you know, uh, short term. It could take a while, but when it comes, it comes. And I'm actually driving in the middle of a fog right now, so I'm going to slow down here my speed. But what I wanted to talk to you about is prayer, really. And the prayer that I'm talking about is I never prayed to be a father. When I met my wife, I knew she didn't want kids. I knew that it was something that I had to come to terms with if I wanted to stay with her. It wasn't a deal breaker for me. Some of my friends and family thought that I should walk away because there was no way you're going to be a father and you would be a great father, they would say. Uh, but they would always tell me, you know, we like her, but if she's not going to give you a child, you really should think about it. You don't want to resent her. God forbid something happens and you're older and you can't have kids at that point. You know, all those played a factor. As you know from my the, the previous episodes of, you know, the breakups, I was not in a very healthy relationship in the past. And I had to come out of that depression. And when I came out of that depression, um, yes, I dated. And it took a couple of, of, a lot of dating to really try to figure out who I was. But it was, you know, one or two individuals that came into my life that really were instrumental in making me really feel that I was good enough to hold a relationship. I was strong enough. I was good looking enough. And I'm not saying that to sound conceited, but when you're, when you're insecure and you feel that you're heavy, you feel that you're ugly, to come away from that and start believing that you don't look bad, that you look you know, good and you feel good about what you see in the mirror was an eye opener for me. When I met my wife and she constantly from day one told me how cute I was or how much I treat, how, you know, how grateful she was the way I treated her, how much she cared about me. There's not a day that goes by that my wife doesn't say that to me over and over and over again. What I did pray for was peace. What I prayed for was happiness. What I prayed for, uh, you know, over 11 years ago, actually it was more because I've been with Rachel 11 years, but, um, but I, I was single for about five or six. And I just said, God, if there is someone there for me, I'm putting this in your hands because I know that you will find me someone that I can wake up next to and be happy with. And I believe God provided that. Now, it's funny because you'll say, well, God gave you a girlfriend, but then he gave you one that wouldn't give you children. And I, and you know what? Sometimes prayers are answered and it doesn't mean it's exactly what you want, but it, it, it did fulfill what I needed. And that was, 
I needed a girlfriend that was going to be good to me. And in the relationship, blossomed into more. And then we became, you know, engaged. And I'm not going to lie to you. You know, children came up from time to time. And she was worried that that was going to be a problem. Um, I have shared this before. I actually had to go to therapy. Um, because I was dealing with another depression. Um, we had one incident between Rachel and I that we felt we were going to break up uh, during the course of our relationship. It was about the seven year in. I guess they call that the seven year itch, right? Um, and, you know, we were, we were, we hit rough times. And um, I had therapy because I knew that I was struggling with the fact that I wasn't going to be a dad. We had a problem that occurred between us. Um, and we really thought it was going to go a different direction. And yet again, I prayed to God for peace. I prayed that if this was the woman I was meant to be with, help me get in the right you know, frame of mind. Help me nurture our relationship and strengthen it so that it became unbreakable. And a lot of the stuff that we go through in life is really not about her and I. It's usually, you know, um, I don't hold back on this show. So, you know, the in-laws are tough and um, they're great people. They're great hearted people, but they get involved. And unfortunately, it puts us in a very difficult situation. So moving forward, after about three to four years of, I would say about three years to be exact, of therapy, um, I had came to terms um, that I was never going to be a dad. And I started to do a youth group for my church because my theory was if I can't be a father to my own child or have a child of my own, that I would mentor others. And... I started to do the youth group and my youth group kids were, you know, of all ages, we would have 30 to 40 kids, sometimes 10, sometimes five. And I just promoted that program to the best of our ability. And lo and behold, a couple years later, God provided us with a miracle and she was conceived it is still extremely overwhelming and I'm so grateful that it has happened my wife slowly has blossomed into a future mom she is such a great person and she's starting to have that mother instincts already and motherhood mentality and she's so good at planning things out and getting things prepared I'm so proud of her and if you're listening today Rachel I'm honored to be your husband and I'm so honored that you're going to be the mother of our child our child so to wrap this whole thing up when you pray in my opinion when you pray Pray for what you believe God will do for you. I don't like to pray for things where I'm asking God, I need this. I want this. God, I need you to do this for me. For me, I pray for peace. I pray for happiness. I pray with the notion that God already knows what I need help in. But I pray to and ask him to just do what you think is best. Because if, if you think I shouldn't have had a kid and mentored other kids... I was okay with that. It took time, but I was okay with it. And now he's providing me with a child. And I'm so grateful. So when you go out into your daily life, if there's things that are happening in your life, if you're struggling, if you're battling those storms that we constantly talk about, if you're unhappy, if you're sad, give it to God. Allow God to, to listen to you. He already knows what you're going to say. He already feels the pain that you do. And he will bring you on the path of righteousness. Sometimes the path seems 
impossible. Sometimes the past seems unpromisable. I guarantee you, every road and all roads lead to him and all roads leave, lead to happiness. For half faith, let it begin. My name is Angel. Have a great day.